we're going to be stepping out of our number system, the real number system. And um, let me make sure I'm not muted and that I am indeed recording and I am and I'm not. And so everything is cool. We're going to step outside of the real number system, which is where we spend almost all of our time and move out to the complex number system, which really exists, although for hundreds of years, maybe even longer, a thousand years maybe, mathematicians have argued, actually no, thousands of years, because even Pythagoras could not cope with the idea of having a negative number underneath the radical. He believed that his God, the Logos, the math God, would not do that. So, um, yeah, people say, or I have read that he went crazy over the issue of this, a negative number under a square root. Newton said it was imaginary, which is how it got the letter I. It's not imaginary in the way we think of it, but Gauss, who finally proved that these little guys existed, um, decided to call the square root of negative one I for imaginary. Okay, well, let's take a look, a memory look at the real number system. The real Mr. number system. Hello? Real Hi. Sure. Um, I guess it's a philosophical question more than anything else. Like, if there can be a negative number under the radical within the system that we've established, does that create a flaw in the system itself or point to, like, larger structural flaws within the foundations of mathematics? It, it points to another number system. Okay. And that's, yeah. that's how we got the complex number system. The square root of negative one wasn't invented. It's just that Gauss discovered a whole new number system. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank you. Which, which actually includes the real number system. If you want to think in terms of sets, the complex number system is the, the big set that includes our number system, the real number system, which includes the integers, and here are examples of integers, the rationals, here are um, uh, examples of rational numbers, those are numbers that can be expressed as fractions, and then the irrationals, numbers like pi and e, you haven't met yet, but you will later in the semester, um, negative the square root of seven or the fifth root of two. Uh, we could just go on and on. Those are just examples of numbers that are in our number system and can be found on the X and Y axis. But one thing that cannot be found on the X and Y axis is this little guy right here. You know that when you put the square root of negative one into your calculator, you get an error message. In fact, it says, the, the error message says, not a real number. Well, the real numbers are here in the real numbers system. This number is outside in the complex number system. And the typical complex number looks like this. It's one number that has two parts, the real part and the imaginary part, but it's not imaginary like we think of it. It's really there, and without that, we would not have an electrical grid. We wouldn't have anything that runs on electricity. Um, if you want to be an electrical engineer, you will hang out in the complex number system a lot and you'll find out that it's really, really true. There is a complex number system. Okay, so we are gonna deal not with the whole complex number system, 
You studied that in intermediate algebra. You studied all the different facets of complex numbers. Instead, we're going to look at um, just what we need for college algebra. And thus, we get to your homework. Review of complex numbers, the I numbers. So we're going to take a look at I. OK. Here is a number that will give you an error message if you put it in the calculator. Not good. But watch what I do. I recognize that I'm not in the real number system, so I need to translate this into the proper form for a complex number. So negative the square root of, uh, that is the square root of negative 17. Well, I can write that as the square root of negative one times positive 17. And then when you have two numbers multiplied underneath a square root radical, the radical is the sign of a root. This little, this little sign right there. Um, when you have two numbers that are multiplied, two or more, that are multiplied underneath the radical, you can just write it this way. Well, we know now that negative one, the square root of negative one, not negative one, but the square root of negative one is I. When there's a, a square root, that's what you see the most often. You'll see the I out front most of the time, just so you can make sure to make clear to teachers that you know that the I is not underneath the square root radical. It's not. However, the absolute correct way to write this, which I really don't care about, is zero for the real part because there is no real part here plus the square root of 17 times i, with i on the outside of the radical. This is called a plus b i form, where that's a real number and that's a real number. But i, of course, is the square root of negative one, but we almost never write the square root of negative one. However, let's look at what they're asking for here. Simplify your answer type. Oh, it tells you to do that. OK, if this had been all you had written, you probably would have gotten one of my math lab's famous error messages. I'm sorry, your answer is correct, but it's in the wrong form. Yes, indeed, because this is the form they're looking at. Type your answer in the form A plus B I. So I did that. And so, not knowing I was being brilliant, there you go. Let's try another one. This one's going to be a little harder. Remember dealing with um, radicals. You had a whole chapter on radicals when you took intermediate algebra or algebra two. And you had to do something called simplify the radical. Uh, this is pretty scary stuff. Well, aside from the square root of negative 32, being negative one times 32. The fact is that 
32 has a square root hiding in it. So anything that's a square root, a perfect square root, has to be pulled outside when everything is multiplied inside the radical. So 32, if you break this down over here, 32 equals uh, four times eight. Well, four is a perfect square. And eight equals four times two. Four is a perfect square. So 32 equals four times four times two. Look at this, four times four is a perfect square. It's four squared. And what could that be? Well, it's 16, and we all know that 16 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite 32, but I can't, I can't forget my negative one. Let's write on the line down here. Negative one times 16 times two. And make sure that your square root comes out and covers all the numbers that are legitimately inside the square root. Then I write this as the square root of negative one times the square root of 16 times the square root of two. So since the square root of 16 is four and the square root of negative one is I, the most common way to write the answer is 4i times the square root of 2. And that's how you would write it if it weren't for this. Type your answer in the form a plus bi. Crap. Okay. We have to have a number, a real number, plus a real number times i. So let's do this thing. Zero plus four times the square root of two, because both of those are real numbers. And then on the outside of this, i. Now you can, if you want to, I believe, my math lab will accept this, you can put parentheses around, that's the B number, you can put parentheses around it just to make clear to my math lab that you are not putting I underneath the square root radical. Just to be Just clear, clear, our uh, math lab math won't math. accept it. Um, if we put I next to four, we have to put I behind the um, square root two. Actually, this is a perfectly fine answer. Okay. The most common answer, but the instructions say to put this in the form A plus BI. That's why my math lab may not accept it if you write it like that. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Okay, square root of 19, 19 won't break down. It's a prime. So negative one times 19 equals the square root of negative one times the square root of 19 equals, well, that would be I times the square root of 19, but, but, there are the instructions. So we're going to put this in the form A plus B times I. So zero plus the square root of 19 times I. And now here's your A, here's your B times I. Okay, moving on. I hope this is bringing back some memories because we are going to encounter these guys today and, and on and off for the rest of the semester.
i times nine, which is nine i. And then we look at the instructions. Remember that this number right here is called the real part. The real part and the imaginary part. And so far all my numbers have had the imaginary part, but not the real part. So I put a zero here for the real part. When the instructions say type your answer in the form A plus BI. So there's gonna be my answer. Oh, oh, coming down here, the way I have to write my answer is zero plus nine I. Okay. Now look, it says express complex numbers in terms of I. We're not being forced to express this one in terms of A plus BI, but down here we are some more. So let's get started. This is a negative sign outside the radical. And then that's what this sign is called. This little sign with a little hook on it. It's called a radical means root. This is going to be negative one times two. So we're going to have our negative sign, which is out front. Then radical negative one times radical two. So this is going to be negative i times the square root of Two, and I believe that since this does not say you have to answer in A plus BI form, this is going to be your answer. Notice you have to very carefully keep that I. You can't do something like say negative times negative is positive because a number, and remember a negative sign is just negative one. A number on the outside of a radical cannot talk to, cannot touch a number on the inside of a radical. So these guys can't talk. They can't say, okay, negative times negative is positive. They can't say that. All right, going back over here, we're going to have zero plus negative i, ah, negative, excuse me, negative the square root of two, and then i on the outside of the radical, and then since plus George is here, hello George, hello George. Plus times minus is minus, right? So our answer is really going to be zero, not plus, minus. Plus times minus is minus. Positive times negative is negative. And that's what I would write in the end. Oh. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have to. I would not have to. No, forget this. I mean, it's right. It's correct. I mean, really. But here, it's enough to leave it like this. We don't have to put it in a fancy form. Just says express the number in terms of I. Okay, I did that. But if you want to do it that way, you could. Either way. But I think this means that my math lab would take it either way. You can be my spy and let me know. 
Okay, one more dealing with the, the uh, imaginary part. And here it says again, put it in A plus BI form. All right, these people are no fun. This is going to be negative on the outside, the square root of negative one times 49. Do not say negative times negative is positive because this negative is on the outside of the radical. I, I develop my own stories to remember things. And when I was a student, I decided, OK, well, inside the radical is like solitary confinement. It's like. This is it. This is prison. And they don't, they can't have any visitors. They must have done something wrong. They're not allowed to have visitors. Or maybe negative one can come to the glass and talk to them. But, or, or this one, this is really just one thing. Um, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf? Yeah, kind of. Maybe one of the little pigs is coming to visit the big bad wolf but has to only talk on the phone through the glass. It's been a long time since I've think, thought of that. So anyway, this is negative times the square root of negative one times the square root of 49. Little stories help. They're mnemonic devices to help you remember. All right, normally you would write this negative nine I. However, because they want this, you're going to write it as 0 plus negative 9i, but that's not your answer because plus times minus is minus, so this will be 0 minus 9i. How did you get to 9 from 49? Uh, I should have put 7. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Yeah, the square root of 49 is 7, not 9. We had another one like this, 81. I still had it on my brain. OK, 7, 7, 7, 7. Because the square root of 49 is not 9. The square root of 49 is 7. There you go. OK. Thank you. All right, now we're getting into. <laughs> oh, an area that I got wrong. I mean, just totally wrong. Let me show you the wrong way that I wrote it when I was a student in college algebra. And I was sure I was right. I went home from the test thinking, I bet I got close to 100%. I'm so cool. <sighs> no, actually, I got a bleeding red test paper. This is back before there were computers. All right. This is what I did that was wrong. Let me write it up here. Wrong. but I really believed it was right. The square, I'm gonna write it as red. I should have written wrong as red too. The square root of negative four times the square root of negative 36. Well, when you have two numbers under a radical and you're multiplying, you can just extend the radical since they're both square roots and say negative four times negative 36. And that would be the square root of, well, negative times negative is positive. Four times six is 24, carry the two, 144. Is that right? 24, yes, it is. All right, the square root of 144, I happen to know, is 12. So I would have answered 12 if this had been the problem. And I was sure I was right, but I was wrong, wrong. Wrong. B 
because these numbers are in another number system, they don't always obey our rules in the real number system. Yes, apparently I wasn't the only one in the class be who missed it because our professor with great disgust at us wrote it on the board. The correct way to do it. Here is the correct way to do this. The square root of negative one times four times the square root of negative one times 30 times the square root of 36. No, 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 I'm jumping ahead. Need to go step by step. The square root of negative one times 36. Now I think everybody would agree that this is correct. So the square root of negative one times the square root of four times the square root of negative one times the square root of 36. So we're going to have I times two times I times six of 16. See how dangerous teaching math is. There you go. 6. The square root of 36 is 6. So this is going to be i times i, which is i squared, times 2 times 6, which is, and you have to memorize this, negative 1 times 12. You're going to come in, fall into this all the time i squared equals negative one. And in a minute, I'm going to show you some things you have to memorize, like with flashcards. You have to memorize all five of them. But i squared is negative one, and it really makes sense. If you have the square root of negative one squared, that's going to be the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one. Well, and you know that the square root of three times the square root of three is three. Well, in the complex number system, the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one is the square root of negative one squared. The square and the square root are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out, leaving me with negative one. Now that's not really the way it would work in the real number system, but it is the way it works in the complex number system. So whatever else happens, please remember that I squared is negative one. Write it on your brain, write it on anywhere you need to. Um, yeah, I squared is negative one. So we're going to have negative one times 12, which is negative 12. Did I even get partial credit? Heck no. Neither did most of the other people in the class who also got it wrong. Okay, moving on. We're going to do this the same way. This will be the square root of negative one times nine times the square root of negative one times 36. That'll be the square root of negative one times the square root of nine times the square root of negative one, times the square root of 36. This is I. This is three. This is I. This is six. This is going to be I squared times three times six, that's 18, right? 
times 18, I squared is negative one, so negative one times 18, it's going to be negative 18. Now, we're going to multiply these by hand. But then I'll show you how to do it on your calculator. You can set your calculator to work with complex numbers. And since the real number system, let's go back to the first page. The real number system is part of the complex number system you really never have to reset it to real numbers. We'll talk about that. Meanwhile, here we go. You're gonna see that this is very much like foil with a catch. Can you scroll back up for just a second? Yeah. Up here. No, where we were now, 63 is 18. there. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else need me to back up or explain anything I did? Okay. Let's multiply. Um, six times three, six times seven I, plus five I times three, and plus five I times seven I. Excuse me. So six times three is 18 plus, six times seven I is 21 I plus, five I times three is 15 I plus, five I times seven I, that's 35. Professor, how'd you get that 21? Uh, I was saying to myself three times seven, and I should have said six times seven, which is 42. Thank you. You're welcome. Forty-two. Okay, now back here. Five I times seven I is 35 I squared. All right, we can't leave that I squared, of course. I'm going to have 18 plus 42I times a plus 15I. I'm just adding them. This is like I have 42 little I's running around in the I daycare center. 42 little I's. And parents bring in 15 more little I's how many little eyes do I have? It's pandemonium. I have two plus five is seven, and four plus one is five. I now have 57. Really? No, uh-uh. Yeah, 57 little eyes running around. It's, it's pandemonium. And this is going to be 35 times negative one. So that'll be 18 plus 57i minus 35. 
So that'll be 18 minus 35. Because these are not I numbers, they're real numbers. Oops. And don't forget your I on the 57, or you'll just be adding them all together. So why does I squared turn back into a real number or an integer or whatever? Because, let's see, I equals the square root of negative one. I squared equals the square root of negative one squared. The square and the square root cancel each other out leaving me with the number underneath. OK, that makes sense. Thank you. Good. All right. Plus 57 I. Now. OK. Eighteen. Fifteen minus eight is seven, and two minus one is one. Am, am I correct that that's minus seventeen, negative seventeen, rather? Uh, my yes, my calculations say it is. Good. Then we're going to declare it correct. I don't think that's the way math is usually done, but what the heck? Uh, correct by peer review. I like it. I like it. At least it's consensus, right? Yes. We're all wrong if we're wrong. But we're wrong together. It's better than being wrong alone. Yes, it does. I don't know. The people at the Capitol the other day probably don't feel that way. Ah, no politics in class. We might have some, <clears throat> some of those people in class. Not me. All right, now we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again. Here we go. Now I am going to make this bigger. I think I, I think I missed something. Does it does the answer just stay negative 17 plus 57 I? Correct, yes. Okay. A plus B I form. Okay, I didn't see that in the directions. Well, well, but it is the way it is. Uh, it does say that, but that would be the answer anyway. You always put the real part first. The part without an I comes first, and the part with an I comes second. Okay, thank you. Thank you. OK, now. Um, what I want to do is I want to put parentheses around the negative six. And I want to put no, nah, that's good enough. It's just that I don't want to lose the negative. So that's just something to try to prevent me from messing up. OK, negative six times positive two, negative six times negative four I. Positive 5i times 2, positive 5i times negative 4i. So going really slow, negative 6 times positive 2 is negative 12. Negative 6 times negative 4i is positive 24i. Positive 5i times positive 2 is positive 10i. And positive 5i times negative 4i is negative or minus 20i. Now that's what I've got so far. Squared. There. So when I put a, a square there, I usually don't put the dot because I don't want to think that it's a, a 
decimal point, right? That would be a disaster. So let's just leave it like that. All right, now 24 plus 10 is 34. So I have 24 little eyes running around the daycare center and then parents bring in 10 more. So I have 34 little eyes, better than 57 little eyes. Negative 12 plus 34i. I hope they're not all sick. Minus 20. I squared is negative 1, so minus 20 times negative 1. That's going to be negative 12 plus 34i plus. 20. Now, I'm just moving the, you don't have to move these together, but I just feel like I should because this is new to some of you or like new to some of you. A uh, negative 12 plus 20 is positive 8. 8 plus 34i should be the answer. 8 plus 34i. Okay. Now, these last two problems look like they're just like these. In a way they are, but in a way they're not. These are very special. And I'll show you exactly how. The first terms of each set of parentheses are exactly the same. And the second, love it. The second, all right, fine. I don't have my green marker anymore. The second term in each set of parentheses are exactly alike. And you have opposite signs between them. Well, there's a pattern. And here it is. A plus B times A minus B. Okay, where a is the first term, and they have to be exactly alike. And B is the second term, and they have to be exactly alike. So if you go ahead and multiply this out, you get A squared minus AB plus AB minus B squared. Where a, B minus A, B zeroes out. So A plus B times A minus B equals the first term squared minus the second term squared. And notice that's the difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares factors into A plus B and A minus B. So they go together depending on what you want. This pattern, it's only true with very, very special binomials in which the first terms are exactly alike and the second terms are exactly alike and the signs in the middle are opposite. So if we were electrical engineers, is this where we would start getting an alternating current? 
I don't know. I don't know enough about electrical engineering. Mm. But I do know that these are called, oh no, the words left my brain when you said that, but that's okay. George is here. He makes everything okay. Um, 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 it'll come to me. It'll come to me because it's my favorite word. It has, yeah, it has sexual connotations. Conjugates is the word. C-O-N-J-U-G-A-T-E-S. Now, this is um, a Latin word, but it's also a Spanish word. And the innocent meaning is play together. Uh, but there's an uninnocent meaning with of play together as well, like conjugal visits in prison. All right, this comes from the same root as conjugal. So, I mean, I just thought I'd throw that in to help you remember it because it's true. Um, here I have conjugates. The first terms are exactly alike. And the second terms are exactly alike. And when you have that, you can, if you want to, just write the first term squared minus the second term squared. And then figure out what that is. It saves you one step. Four squared is 16. Minus two I squared is four I squared. So that's going to be 16 minus four times negative one. That's going to be 16 plus four is 20. The cool thing about multiplying conjugates is that the middle terms cancel out. And with complex conjugates, which is what these are called, you end up getting just a number. It's so cool, let's do this again. These are conjugates. You've got to make sure they're really conjugates. It's not that they look like conjugates, but they really are conjugates. So you have to make sure, okay, the sixes in the first position are the same. The nine eyes in the second position are the same. And one pair of parentheses has a plus and one has a minus in the middle. Then all you have to do is this. Six squared minus nine I squared. You have to put parentheses around the 9i because both the 9 and the i are going to be squared. So 6 squared, let me come down to the line, is 36 minus 9i squared is 81i squared, which is 36 minus 81 times negative one, which is 36 plus 81, which is six plus one is seven and three plus eight is 11. So if my, my sideways adding is correct, the answer should be 117.
All right, for the multiplication, let's go. I want to show you how to do it on the calculator. For a TI, now if you've got a Casio, I can't tell you how to work it. I don't know, okay? But, but for the TI-84, TI-83 or TI-84, this is how you would do this. The very first thing you have to do is go to mode. Is that what I need to do? Yes, it is. Click on the mode button right there next to the second button. And use your directional arrows to come down, 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 down to where real is probably highlighted because this is set for the real number system by default. But I want to reset it for the complex number system A plus BI. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key. I'm going to hit enter. And now if I move back up, I see that A plus B I is highlighted. This is now set for the real number system, uh, the complex number system. Um, OK, second quit. Now, watch what I do. Watch what I do. Okay, number 10 up here in your homework. The, uh, the original problem before I marked it all up was negative six plus five I times negative six, oh, no, times positive two minus four I. Okay. So that was the original problem. Now, I'm gonna put it in the calculator and this is so cool. Parentheses, negative, six plus five. Now, I cannot make this go down anymore. You have to look above your decimal key down here at the bottom and you'll see a little bitty I. Get the I by clicking on the second key and then the decimal key and then close your parentheses. And then get two minus four I, parentheses, two minus, that's a minus and not a negative, four, second dot, close parentheses. There I go. I am multiplying two complex numbers. They're not conjugates, they're just different complex numbers. And for some reason, I'm multiplying them. I hit enter. Eight plus 34, I. And I'm sure that the calculator is saying, these humans think that's such a big deal. Let's try this one, number nine, in your homework. Parentheses, six, positive six, plus five I, close parentheses, open parentheses, three plus seven I, three plus <clears throat> seven, second dot, close, <clears throat> close parentheses. Let me make sure it's right. Six plus five I, three plus seven I. Enter. 
negative 17i negative 17 plus 57i negative 17 plus 57i you don't have to use a calculator but if you want to it's okay learn how your calculator does it or you can follow this video to see how um, the TI does it, the TI 83 or 84. Or if you have an ancient TI 82, that would probably work, but it doesn't work for some things we need. So you're safer with the TI 83 and 84. Plus, preferably plus silver edition. What you get with that is if you click on apps, <laughs> Never mind. In real life, there are a whole bunch of apps that come with it. All right, that is our review of the real of the complex number system. Let me move this. Make this smaller. Yes, this is wrong. I still have a resentment after all these years. Is that silly? But I remember it like it was yesterday. I was so sure I was right. <sighs> Mr. Jones was such a jerk, but he was an adorable jerk. Oh, well, enough of that. He's dead. Let it go. All right, anyway. We all have our thorns in our side. If it hadn't been for that, the lesson wouldn't have stuck with you as well. That's true. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> OK, we need to move on. Why don't you take a, a five or a 10 minute break? Which would be better? Be back at 910. And we are going to start solving quadratic equations first by factoring and then by using, ta-da, the quadratic formula. <laughs> 